Hi, I'm Johnny Smith. I'm a motoring journalist and I've been driving the Jaguar I-Pace around for the last couple of days. But like most electric car drivers, I want to get the most out of my EV, which is why I've come to meet Giles Lenthal from Jaguar, who's hopefully going to give me some hints and tips. Hello, Giles. Hi, Johnny. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good. I'm very good. I've only been driving it like, you know, 24 hours or so, so uh, I'm still just getting used to it. Well, I've been driving one now for about nine months, so hopefully, if there's any questions, then I hope I can answer them all. But first and foremost, um, do you want to charge? I would like to charge. That is the most important thing. It is. Let's do it. I'm going to get the cable out. When people say to me, how do you live with an electric car? I say, well, it's really similar in behaviour to the way we live with our phones now, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, if you think, what's usually the last thing you do before you go to bed at night? You plug your smartphone Put in. Put my phone in, yeah. So when you wake up in the morning, it has 100% charge. Yeah. And then usually you're fine for the day. And what we do recommend is that the customer installs a home wall charging station. Yeah. Because this is the most convenient uh, way of charging. Then range anxiety at least should be pretty much a thing of the past on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. If you have a house but you don't have one of these home chargers, mm -hmm. your option is then your conventional plug, right? Yeah. So okay. the car is available with a what we call the basic home charging cable. Yeah. And that will allow you to plug into a three-pin or your domestic plug. We don't really recommend that the customer relies on that because that's not a really nice charging experience because it's going to take you a couple of days <laughs> to charge a car up completely. So yeah. it's not something yeah. we want you to rely on. Electric car can be good for you, even yeah. if you don't have access to something like this because you live in a city, yeah. um, because there's loads of public charging stations around. It's going to take more planning, a bit it of a behavioural yeah. change, but I guess if you live in a, in, a, in, a, in a city, the car will travel less anyway in terms of miles. You'll find it's amazing how quick it becomes as part of your just planning your behavioural process. Yeah. So what I tend to find I do now is if I'm going away for the weekend with the family, I always look for hotels with a charge station. So I can plug yeah. it in overnight, just like when I'm at home, yeah. so the car charges up and it's free to use for the next day. So your home hopefully becomes your fuel station, or one of them. Yes. And the other thing about plugging it in is, of course, you can prepare it for, for a journey ahead. You can precondition the interior of this car, yeah. um, independent from charging. We have an app and you can go through your app on your smartphone and precondition the interior. However, obviously using the energy out of the wall From is the more grid. efficient exactly in terms of yeah. being able to make sure that it doesn't impact your range. Yeah. But also what a great feature is with the I-Pace, especially in this sort of weather when it's cold, yeah. is that you can precondition the battery. And so when you plug it into an AC supply such as this, yeah. then you can program and say, I'm going to be leaving in the morning, it'll warm the interior, it'll warm the battery as well as charging, and therefore when you leave in the morning, yeah you're in the most optimum position. But one of the things I find, and this is really interesting, is you only really need to precondition if you're doing a long journey. So I actually don't ever precondition on a day-to-day -day basis because the battery has a sufficient charge yeah. for me not to worry about it. All right, Giles, so the WLTP range, WLTP, the official testing body, isn't it? Uh, range of the I-Pace is 470 kilometers, uh, 292 miles That's right, uh, yep. on one full charge. Yeah. In the real world, how close can people expect to get? Because I know, especially if you're a very early adopter of EVs, you know, the, 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 the issue of, of range as quoted can be a sort of scary prospect. Yeah, so the 470 kilometres and 292 miles are our official um, certified numbers, and we obviously stand by those because they are um, official and correct. Yeah. Um, but as you say, in the real world, as a customer, you should really expect to get around about the 220 to 230 mile mark. Now, there is a reason for this. So it's still a laboratory test. Uh, set out a single um, temperature, which is around about the 25 degree mark, yeah. um, and it uses certain drive cycles. And of course, if you take a cold day like today, yeah. then temperature can have a really, really um, big impact to a range of an electric vehicle. So that's why, realistically, the real world range is lower than the WLTP range. Yeah. Now, there's key things to think about. Yeah. 
there's obviously the driving style and speed. Which yeah. you drive. We have the heated seats on, we have the air conditioning on, we have the yes. temperature up. There's two of us, so obviously weight. So all yeah. these things obviously get used um, energy yeah. and therefore have an effect. An EV is really, really efficient. Yeah. So on this iPace, about 90% of the energy that goes into the uh, battery gets used to push you forward in forward motion. But if you take a typical um, uh, combustion engine, so on ice, like diesel and petrol, yeah. they're only typically about 30 to 40% efficient. You know, my family actually live in Munich, uh, and I commute to the UK every week to do work. Munich is nowhere near Warwickshire. Exactly. Now, normally I'll fly, but I do like to drive down there um, at least a couple of times in the year because I just like to do the drive. Yeah. And in a car like the I-Pace, that will require planning. I mean, a colleague of mine, she went on holiday in the summer in her I-Pace and did 2,000 miles around Europe and had no problems at all. She was able to charge very conveniently. Uh, yeah. It did not impact her ability to be able to enjoy the holiday and be where she wanted to be when she wanted to be there. She said that she spent all of around about 25 pounds on Fuel. Uh, energy. Yeah, Really? For the whole 2,000 miles. That's impressive, isn't it? And that's the thing, if you're willing to if you're willing to consider that adjustment, those are the opportunities available to you. Yeah. Also, what we find is once customers make the switch to EVs, they very rarely want to go back. So, regenerative braking. Yeah. What you'll notice, if I go into here, so let me just, here we go. So, here's regenerative braking, yeah. and you've got it at low. Yeah. And how do you feel that the car's driving? It feels like when I come off the throttle, it's coasting like an, a normal auto. But on the gauge in front of me, obviously I can see that it's dipping into the charging, so it's, it is harvesting some energy from that. So if I now turn it to high, yeah. and as you go down, as you drive on, just sort of say to me how you feel that is, what's the differences? Okay, so you yeah. You really notice the difference? It's really, really yeah. dragging then, yeah. And that really helps in terms of, um, say, getting as much energy back into the battery while you're doing your driving. And yeah. what I really love about the regen braking, to be honest with you, I actually only really drive with regen braking on high, um, because you can have that single pedal driving style. Yeah, yeah. And it just really sort of makes the whole driving experience relax as well as being efficient. So if you just want to pull up on the left, just up here, then I'll also show you one of the really cool um, features that we have within the iPlace stack is a real benefit to the customer. Okay. So if you're an iPace customer, yeah. and you have any questions about how the car works, and you want to know some new tips, so for example, like the range we were talking about, or simply how the function is, yeah. then we have something which we call iAssist, and it's behind here. So you just press that, put it down, and you can press that button. Oh, look at and that. And that'll call through to a call center, and the person at the end of the line is be able to help you with any of your requirements and questions to do with iPace. So now, it's dedicated iPace expert guru. So Johnny, I really hope that today's been useful for you. We okay. know that there are a lot of factors that can really influence your range, but by just doing a few behavioural changes, such as charging your car in the same way that you do with your smartphone, so plug in at night, yeah. therefore day-to-day -day range anxiety shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. If you are going to be going that longer distance, just a little bit of planning might be involved. For example, making sure the hotel you're booking overnight has a charge post so you can charge overnight. Yeah. Um, using preconditioning, again, for that longer journey, just make sure that the car's ready for you and that you don't need to use it every single day, but it's very useful for those longer journeys. And then on top of that, obviously the tips of just being able to uh, adjust how the car uh, energy usage is used and how you drive, just yeah. to make sure that you can optimize the range and also just to make sure that you're comfortable adjusting with the day-to-day uh, -day usage of the vehicle. I mean, we're really proud of the iPace. This is a sports car that happens to be an electric car yeah. as opposed to the other way around, which means it has all the true DNA traits of a Jaguar yeah. of being a performance car. So we want people to be able to enjoy it. We want people to be able to be enthusiastic and not have to compromise their lifestyle. And those little changes means that they can do exactly that.